Hashem happens. Sometimes the unexpected can occur. Like last night when I ran in, when Eddie and I ran in to three stars of Stranger Things. What a night it was. Definitely a night to remember. Welcome everyone, Zach the Incredible Impression here. Gonna cross two more things off my bucket list today. This is the last day that we will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Tomorrow, I go home to Florida and vlogging will cease for about a month. But fret not my friends, it will continue in March. Trust me, as I said today, I'm gonna cross two more things off my bucket list. We're gonna begin here in Centennial Olympic Park, established 1996. I've always wanted to come here because of the history of it. The Olympic Games were held here and a little tragedy, which I'm not even going to attempt to get into because I like to look at the finer things in life versus the tragic things. So let's go in and take a look, shall we? Can you believe that back in the 90s, this place was bustling with tourists, musicians, and fun seekers alike? The Olympic Games were held right here in Centennial Park, Atlanta, Georgia. And right up ahead there is the Three Rings Plaza. Now, those three large concrete posts, or the four of them, I don't know if that's where they lit the Olympic torches or what it was, but... I'm sure it was something like that. As a matter of fact, there are five of them. The other one's kind of hidden back in the back there. But there are five of them. And there's a light post, which I almost ran into. And we got the CNN Center in the distance where we were the other day. We're heading in to the Three Rings Plaza. And they got the Ferris wheel over there, which is really neat. Wish I could go up in that. But I'm gonna have to cross that out another day. And the walkway here is adorned with bricks that people purchased and had their names engraved in. Now that is really something. All of these people donated to have bricks mentioned in their names a gift from the friends who believed in atlanta's olympic dream they've got all the friends if you want to call them quote unquote friends <laughs> names on this plaque and i have no idea who this guy is but i'm sure i'll find out in a minute We've got the five rings up there. Earlier, I said three rings plaza. I meant the five rings plaza. Now, I believe we have found out who this gentleman is, who currently has his back to us. The Republic of France is proud to honor its native son, Baron Pierre de Counter tin whatever his name is <laughs> whose dream of a world united in peace through sport is celebrated in every olympic games this plaque recognizes the contribution of france in 1996 toward the plaza surrounding the statue you know he kind of sets the record straight for all you tim conway fans out there who thinks that Dirkus Dorf <laughs> Dirkus Dorf founded the Olympic Games because if you watch that old VHS of Tim Conway 
in Dorf in the first games of Mount Olympus, you will see him standing there talking to Leonard, played by Vincent Ciavelli, and saying, maybe I'm going to start the, with the games. So have an opportunity to run and to jump and twist around the whole bunch. Come on, we all know that's all fiction. That gentleman there, Pierre, was the original founder the Olympic Games. Just setting the record straight. I'm guessing that is the poles that held the Olympic torches. I'm pretty sure they are. We got this awesome looking fountain here, but I believe that the center torch here was the main one that they probably lit first. I'm not sure. I have not seen any footage from the Olympic Games except for that one tragedy which I'm not going to get into and this here the five ring water fountains if you look up old footage of the 1990 I believe it was 96 not sure though don't, don't quote me on that. I mean, I didn't really follow the Olympic Games very much, but of all the attractions and everything that was going on, still, I wanted to come here and document it. I know, you're probably thinking someone who doesn't know much about the Olympic Games is, you know, what are you doing around here? <laughs> but if you look up old footage, you can see people actually playing in the fountains like these kids are right now I mean this was an event that was a big deal I mean this was a big deal and that dog almost tried to run me over <laughs> walking up to the five rings of the Olympics really a nice place very nice very family friendly I was right it was the 1996 Olympics here he is the host himself Billy Payne this monument here dedicated to the Atlanta 9 civic dreams come true because of the unselfish efforts of men and women who share a vision for the greater good Atlanta's Olympic dreams were carried forward on the broad shoulders of the Atlanta Nine, the volunteer corps of heroic individuals who invested their lives in a quest to build a better future for their city. Along with Billy Payne and Andrew Young, who was the mayor at the time, these nine distinguished citizens changed history by successfully campaigning to win the 1996 Centennial Olympic Games for Atlanta and those nine Olympic nine sorry nine people were Peter Candler Ginger Watson Horace Sibley Tim Christian Cindy Fowler Charlie Battle Linda Stevenson Charlie Schaefer and Bobby Reardon So it's almost 3.30 p.m. I need to get to the next location for the vlog so that I'm not late because my ticket is scheduled for 3.30. I maybe got about five minutes, if that, to get over there and get in. But we're headed to the next location of the day. One word you definitely don't want to use in Atlanta is Pepsi because Atlanta is the world of Coca-Cola. This is the main attraction for today's vlog, the world of Coca-Cola. If you had to ask, if I had to choose between Coke or Pepsi, I would probably choose Coke, the classic taste. But unfortunately, when it comes to zero sugar, I'm all about Pepsi. I hope I don't get hurt for saying that. I hope nobody heard me. 
but we're gonna go into the world of Coca-Cola. Here we go, we're gonna enter the world of Coca-Cola. You know, I never thought that a museum would deal with a soda, but it's really cool. Look at all these Christmas time Coca-Cola snowflakes. Now that is cool. You can see across the way the aquarium, the Georgia Aquarium. Would have liked to go there, but don't really have the time today. But next time, maybe. Sorry, Marine Life. Where else? Indiana. North Carolina, yeah. Alabama. Alabama, Texas. Chile. Chile. Utah. Oh, no, not Utah, not Columbia. Utah. Indiana, California, New York, Mexico, anyone from Atlanta? There we go, we're in the house, all right? Now guys, clap it up for yourselves, thank you all for joining us today. Once again, we're happy to have you all. Right, right. all right guys, let's get down to business, okay? All right guys, hear me up. Does anyone know the man who created the Coca-Cola formula? I give you all a hint, guys. First name starts with a J. That's right, first name starts with a J, so take a wild guess, guys. Jefferson. John, okay. I heard Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Good answer, but not quite, all right, you guys. Whoever said John, you're correct. Now, guys, his name was John S. Permington. That's right. And guys, remember that name today? John S. Permington, who was a pharmacist, and he created Coca-Cola right here in Atlanta. By the way, did you guys know, at first, Coca-Cola was used for medicine. That's right, guys. If you had a cold or a cough, guys, you could use Coca-Cola to make it feel better. That's right. Now, I have another question for you all. The answer is right now inside this room. Hear me out. Can anyone answer this? How much did a glass of Coca-Cola go for back in the day? Ten cents. That's right, guys. Five cents. If you take a look right there, that's oh, five cents. And guys, there's an artifact right now inside this room, guys, that created the Coca-Cola. There's the oldest artifact in this entire room, all right? And guys, I'm going to show you the oldest artifact. And guys, the oldest artifact is right there, guys. Now, uh, guys, that right there is called the Ceramic Serve Dispenser. Can you guys repeat that? Ceramic Serve Dispenser. Good job. Now, Yes, made out of glass, that's right. Now, you're probably wondering as well, how do you create Coca-Cola in there, guys? Well, you need five ounces of carbonated water, one ounce of Coca-Cola syrup, as you mix that all around, and now we give you a nice glass of Coca-Cola. Good job, now, guys, we're gonna switch things up now. Guys, we're gonna play a game. Now, this game we're about to play is called Spot Effects. In order to play, I'm gonna say an artifact inside this room. Are you, all you guys gotta do is just point to it. Now, are you guys ready to play? All right, let's play now. You guys spot an artifact by two with two tires. Two tires, point to it. You guys got it? Final answers? Now guys, yes. Final answers, point to the bicycle up here, guys. You're correct. That is our swim bicycle. Any guesses on what we use that bicycle for, guys? There you go, that's right. Now you're probably wondering as well, why is it yellow? Well, this is a very, very important reason why it's yellow, guys. Hear me out. The reason why it's yellow is because it's just a nice color. The reason why it's yellow is because we don't have a set color to the 70s, so we were using yellow, red, green, even sometimes blue. Now, I have another one for you all so you guys get ready. Can you guys spot a big bottle opener? A big bottle opener. You guys got it? Final answers? Hey guys, yes, if you put it all the way over here to the side, you are correct. That is our big bottle opener. It's right there above our friend Wendy, so guys, please say hello to Wendy for me. She said hello back, all right? Now, I have one more for you all. It's the hardest one to get ready. Can you guys spot a big, shiny Coca-Cola sign? I got you there basically the whole room, right? That's right, now guys, final answer is yes. If you point it all the way up there to the top, you are correct, right behind you. Guys, that is the Spencerian script sign. It's one of the first signs ever created by Coca-Cola. Now, you guys are really good at this game I see, so guys, clap it up for yourselves. Last sign. I got bad news though, guys. I don't have a prize, you guys did this for nothing. Sorry, all right? Hey guys, I'm gonna talk to you about the next few steps, okay? Now, guys, these doors are gonna fly open to the left. They're also gonna fly open to the right. The lights will flash up above, and you guys are gonna walk inside for a six minute movie. Hey guys, after that six minute movie, hear me out. You guys get started on your self-guided journey. Are you guys ready for that, by the way? Yeah. All right, great. Now, I have good news for you all. Now, guys, the good news is we just opened a brand new exhibit today. You guys are some of the first to walk in. So guys, clap it up for that as well. Oh, wow. So you guys are the first. Okay. 
Uh, as that exhibit is called the beverage lab, what you can do inside the beverage lab is you can create your own drink, you can drink it down. That's right. Oh, now, wow. next to the other spot, guys, is where we have the vaults. That's where the secret formula is kept. You might want to go see that. We have the second floor, everyone. It's where things get interesting. We have the world famous Coca Cola tasting room with over 200 products plus. I know you guys are ready for that. Ooh, By the way, yeah. make sure you make the tasting room though your last stop. That's your only exit when you're ready to leave on the second floor. Don't forget. Next up as well, we have a 3D theater, and I cannot forget to mention, guys, we have a polar bear on, out there on the loose. That's right, guys, we have a polar bear, so go, go see him. Now, one more thing before we enter inside, though. I'm gonna know everyone's favorite Coke product on a count of three. Let's do it. One, two, three. Coke. Coke. Sprite. Zero. Vanilla. I heard Pepsi, he said it back there. That's okay, slang in this town. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna check out mine. You guys gotta try it today, okay? The guys, my favorite Coke product, it's called the Beverly. That's right, make sure you try the Beverly. It's from Italy. Question is now, do you guys trust me? Yeah? yeah. No? Great. All right, now guys, once again, take care. And thank you all so I'll much. try anything as long as it doesn't kill me. <laughs> we just went in and watched a six minute intro movie about happiness. Come on now, we could all use a little more happiness these days, couldn't we? I was not allowed to film inside the theater, no pictures, no films, but that's okay because don't want to spoil all the surprises. We're now getting into the queue line to go into the vault. This is where the original Coca-Cola recipe is housed. Sunday dishes up there. They don't make them like they used to. Here we go. Access authorized. We are granted access to the Coca Cola vault. Wow. This was a century and four days before I was born. Wow, May 8th, 1886. I was born May 12th, 1986. Maybe it's no wonder I love Coca-Cola so much. Many claims have arisen about the true origins of the secret formula of Coca-Cola. Some Indian nationals proudly maintain it was invented in India by a chemist working for a British soft drink company just three years before Dr. Pemberton debuted it in America. I'm going to make myself a figure here. There we are. Be part of the secret. Our high tech stand determines our security based on these questions. We will proceed with the security screening quiz now. Well, what do you know? I have company. A ladybug landed on me. Oh, you want to tag along for the vlog? Okay, let's go. The evolution of the Coca-Cola bottle. All of this vintage Coca-Cola stuff. Yeah. Really neat. Uh, he more like Luke. <laughs> Hold on to the bottle. 
bottling rights for your own future use. Sell the bottling rights. Look at this old Coca-Cola delivery truck. Now that is retro right there. They've got these rings here, the Phillies, the San Francisco Giants, and their relationship with the Boston Red Sox. And Jewel autographed this guitar for Coca-Cola. You know, I completely forgot that Elton John actually advertised for Coca-Cola. He also did several ads for Diet Coke, and there was one in particular called Old School, or Golden Hollywood, where he was at his piano in a nightclub, dressed almost exactly like he is in this picture. And around him was Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney, Louis Armstrong, and Christy Brinkley. Then there was one with Paula Abdul called Old Hollywood with Groucho Marx, Cary Grant, and the Marx Brothers, of course, as I said, Groucho. There's a nice guitar there. Wow, look at all these old Coke vending machines. There's one of those old fashioned Coca Cola barrels. Cream soda is good. Now the main attraction. Regular Coca-Cola. Oh, that is even better than in the store. I mean, this is fresh. Fresh from Coca-Cola. Mmm. Or as Ernest used to say, <sighs> oh wait, I need the proper, the proper drink for that. There we go, Sprite. All right, here's to Ernest. <sighs> ah. 
me another one of them bad boys. How about it, bro? It's currently raining, and I stepped out of the world of Coca-Cola, and it was raining pretty good. It's starting to die down now, but I'm sitting under the ticket booth area, uh, just trying to wait for it to die down a little bit more so that I can make a break for the swamp, which is in the parking garage over there somewhere. <laughs> I had to park in the aquarium lot since the world of Coca-Cola lot was full. So, but like my dad always did for me when he went on business trips or went overseas or whatever, he would always bring me back a nice little souvenir. So I got some souvenirs for my family back in Florida and can't go to Coca-Cola without getting an old fashioned Mexican Coca-Cola. This is a huge bottle. Ooh, that's good. But, as for right now, guys, we're gonna draw this vlog to a close. Sorry if I didn't get, like, every single thing there in the world of Coca-Cola, but I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. For all of you people who want to come here and check it out, I urge you to. I encourage you to. It's a great, great place. All the history of Coca-Cola. And you'll love it. But this day is drawing to a close. Tomorrow, I have to be out of the hotel at 11 a.m. Then I am making the trip back to Florida, back to my family. And then I have to go immediately back to work. Not necessarily to Publix right away, but... I need to start moving to my new apartment. So, there's a lot to do. <laughs> and pretty much my entire summer is going to be booked, as well as March. Because my upcoming plans are these. In March, from the 5th to the 15th, I will be back in Spartanburg, South Carolina with Eddie and Steve. And then, on June 4th, we are leaving, Eddie, Steve, Eddie Cook maybe, and myself are leaving for Minnesota, and then we're going to go over and visit Mount Rushmore. And then, after that, immediately after that, I will be heading to Oregon to start shooting the principal photography for my scenes in my first on-screen film appearance. So, pretty much from... June until maybe August. I will not be anywhere in Florida nor on the East Coast. I've got a lot of stuff to do. My acting career is taking off and I want to spend more time doing that, working on that. I do believe my time at Publix right now is very limited because of everything kicking off for me. So, I'm going to get out of here right now. Thank you all so much for joining me these last three days. It's been amazing. And all I can say is I will see you guys next time. From Atlanta, Georgia, vlog and adventure over.